So welcome. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate your time and I'm excited to share part 2.0 of my content marketing. Uh, this is attempt 2.0 for part 2.0. And essentially the idea is the first phase is simply flex the content creation muscle. This is the 90 day challenge, the 120 day challenge. Do create, 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 right? We need to produce more than we consume. So the first phase in really building an authority site and building a site that's going to generate thousands tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of visits per month from Google and from the search engines. This is free traffic received via energy you put in, right? The first step is to become a content producer. Once you've produced content on a very kind of habituated pattern, you can add on what I like to consider, which is version 2.0. And version 2.0 is compiling, compiling your pieces of content that are relevant to each other in like a mega post. And I did do a quick brief show of this, but I'm going to show you exactly how this works in my site real quick, just to make sure everyone kind of understands the theory. Um, because it's, we need to first kind of habituate the process. Once you've got that process habituated, then the goal is to really round out the content and make these kinds of posts that just wow people. And I call these shareable posts. This post is focused on the keyword phrase, how to advertise on Facebook. I find that this is the most kind of tailored keyword phrase to what I teach. I have a content upgrade in here that will get people on my list. I give them a case study of how I generated like 14,000 leads on Facebook in 30 days. My conversion rate when people reach this page is between 10 and 15% to a lead. I've also got affiliate links on this page. So it is an asset that can generate Con that can generate revenue. But take a look at this. So the first few chapters, right, I broke this up into table of contents. And this entire table of contents is based on my video that I taught how to kind of lay out and plan your digital information product course. It was the one I did where you had a circle on one side, a circle on the other side, and there was a line through it and all the hash marks were the different things. So that's what these effectively ended up being. And I did this, this took one day to put together. It's over 3000 words of text. And you can see the first few chapters are a lot of text, but then you're gonna notice my videos start really coming through. And this post has about 28 videos on it today, and it's growing. Every time I update a video and I update a how-to something on Facebook, this is where I go add that post. Now, it's more organized than a playlist on YouTube, but even more powerful, this is able to get picked up by Google, and it's able to return Google organic traffic to me, which is my ultimate goal. Because if I get Google ranking me on the first page for how to advertise on Facebook, I am going to unleash an absolute flood of traffic and leads to my site. Now, real quick, I just want to show you the second one. And this is where I think it all fell apart. So I've created the, the DIY sales funnel video series. You've probably seen a couple of those. This is the post now. And I decided that click funnels alternatives was the main keyword I was going to focus on. But now I created such a powerful post about this click funnels alternative. It links to all of my other content. It links them into my email list. And then it includes all of the different videos and the resources that will walk an individual through the process of setting up their own alternative to click funnels. Now this is so powerful because the prospects state of awareness for someone who's searching for click funnels alternative, this individual knows what a sales funnel is. This individual knows exactly what the result they want is, right? And at that point, this individual is most interested in if they're looking for a click funnels alternative, they're literally saying, I don't want to pay for that for some reason. What are my other options? And I'm not only explaining the other options, Options to them, I'm showing them step by step by step how to build it out themselves. What happens when a user finds either one of these kinds of blog posts that are like their ultimate posts, right? When I use the ultimate guide idea, and that's essentially what I did here, 
it instantly positions me as an absolute expert in the field. To be able to put that much content together that's all me is like, wow. Somebody sees that and it's like, wow, inducing. So that's the first thing is it's a great positioning piece, but it's also highly shareable, right? Let's say you and a few friends are kind of embarking on this internet thing in your own way and one person's like, oh, ClickFunnels, check it out. And a couple of people are like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And one of you finds my post on ClickFunnels Alternative, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna share that with these other people who you know have a similar interest because there's social capital for each of us to be an introducer to ideas, right? When I go find an article that I find fascinating and I go publish it on YouTube or on uh, Facebook or Twitter, the fact that I'm the first one to send this out to my friends gives me social credibility. So now I have created a shareable piece of content that gives other people that possibility to gain social credibility through sharing my content. It's also so big that someone in my space would look at my kind of like how to advertise on Facebook posts and they'd be like, dude, I'm never going to recreate that. It's 30 videos. It's 3000 words. It's easier for that person to link to my ultimate guide post than it is for them to go recreate it again, making it highly shareable, making it the kind of a post that's going to attract backlinks. I don't really chase backlinks. I like to attract them through putting out massive pieces of content. And I don't want you to think you need to jump into phase two. It's called phase two for a reason, right? And the reason that's phase two is because I started my videos and I started putting out a video a day. I didn't know where it was gonna go. I did videos about mindset, videos about organic traffic, Pinterest, I've been all over the board. But then I used the YouTube kind of uh, playlist functionality to group these ideas together. And I've just seen so many comments now of people in the YouTube, like, where do I start on Facebook ads? And now I've created a massive resource for them. So as you're moving forward in your business, and in your content marketing efforts, start to think, how can you combine the ideas, right? So you're doing a 90 day challenge and you talk about three or four or five different things over the course of 90 days, which means you're gonna have 10, 20 videos on this, five, eight videos on that, 25 videos on that. But once you get towards the time frame when creating that daily content is easy because it gets a lot easier, then you could start to think in your evenings or when you have time and you're not wanting to do or ready to do a video, you could think, okay, how can I take these five videos that each talk about a different side of this main core topic for my audience? How do I help communicate that in a way through one blog post that makes it this epic level of post. And at that point, you're creating these ultimate guides, these huge multimedia posts that really have the possibility of ranking well on Google, getting human beings to share it. And when people find it, it absolutely positions you as the expert. You get to become that kind of trusted advisor, right? Because all my content, if you read it, yes, I promote a few tools that make those systems work, but 100% of the how-to information is free, right? I'm not pitching anything in there. So they're guard is down. They're able to go through the content comfortably, really kind of build. It's, it's a relationship building process. If I walk you through the course of building a WordPress site, something you've never done before, you go from being scared of it and confused to actually having one done in a weekend through my videos. I wasn't physically there for that, but you now feel a kinship to me and that relationship is formed. And that relationship is the core of a lifestyle business. That's when people are like, where do I sign up for your list? Where do I buy your products? Where, how can I get you to consult me? And I don't sell anything yet and I don't do any consulting, but that's what happens, right? You might be interested in selling a product. You might be interested in doing coaching and consulting. And it's through these massive pieces of content that you demonstrate your expertise. You demonstrate what to do. If they're a DIYer and they wanna do it themselves, great. If they read through the entire post and get to the bottom, they're just like, oh my gosh, there is so much to do. You can have a call to action at the bottom, say overwhelmed, want me and my team to do it for you. Click here and learn about our done for you package or done for you services. And that's how you transition little pieces of content that you do in your 90 day challenge. And then you expand those out in these giant posts that attract they attract highly targeted individuals and those posts build the relationship. And at the end, you, you easily transition to segue to get those people on your list, to get them to contact you for a one-on-one -on -one idea for like a, a consultation, et cetera, et cetera. That's the core concept. I probably just 
said that twice for a lot of you watching. So I want to jump over at this point and get into the question and answers. Um, I know some people were asking questions in the other live broadcast, but um, I don't really have that open anymore. So let me find this live broadcast. Give me one second. I'm just going through a couple of tabs here. And it is this one here. Awesome. So I am going to close down things. So if you have questions about content marketing, hit me with them. If you have questions about your funnel, hit me with them. Get your questions inside of the comments. Now I've got a little over an hour to do questions. I have about a half of a mug of coffee and it's my, I love grandma coffee mug because who doesn't love grandmas and um, real quick, fun story. I love grandma talking about interesting niches. I have a friend who sold, I love sewing and I love knitting t-shirts to grandmas through Facebook ads very successfully. And he has moved on to offer equipment and, and sewing machines and other things things and he's been doing that for three to four years so i love grandma is true and huge shout out to my buddy dave um good on you he's doing great things in the world and helping spread the grandma love so i figured you might be interested in that obscure niche idea so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna share my screen here and we're gonna go through these um we are gonna go through these uh, comments together so you can kind of see where I'm at and I will be able to open any sort of browser windows we need so and I didn't even say thank you I don't think so thank you very much for being here I really do appreciate it I really like getting to spend this time if you're hustling on the holiday weekend here in the US good for you I'm glad to see you're hustling out this is what it takes and if you're overseas thank you for tuning in um, all right, so what we are, ClickFunnels, okay, cool, that's where we're at. So I'm just scrolling down, looking for the first question. Um, how to create the dollar trial and ClickFunnels using the custom code? Man, I, I don't have that code anymore. I kind of let it go. Um, I have a SEO channel that goes over. Um, hmm, Chase, that's it, you're done. That sounds like self-promotion. You go in timeout. Any self-promotion gets instant timeout. That's uh, just how I roll on this. So, yep, perfect, he's gone. Thank you for calling him out. Horses are expensive. Um, question, how do I earn my money? So affiliate links, uh, I recommend products and I could do my own services if I wanted to, I could do coaching if I wanted to, but that's not something I'm interested in. Uh, my wife and I sell information products. I sell apps. I sell books. I sell print books, Kindle books. We sell CDs. We have a membership program. We sell digitally downloadable products. And with the Miles Beckler stuff, it's, it's all affiliates a hundred percent. Um, in your opinion, what are the different content marketing should be done for firm, which is logistics based? It's always content. Teach people things. You got to teach them, right? Like so many people go into content marketing thinking, how can I sell them all my stuff, right? How do I sell them all my stuff? The, the right way to do it is teach them how to use your stuff. So for example, my content marketing works. So I'm doing that ClickFunnels alternative. And if I make commissions on all three of those things. I can make like $100, $150 in commissions. So I just teach people how to use what I recommend they use and they watch it. They're like, oh my gosh, this is the full blueprint here. This is amazing. Now I'm going to just do what he says. And since they follow my steps, I've built that credibility that they trust me. They follow my steps. They buy my things, et cetera, et cetera. So what do your people need to know and what do they need to do to leverage your logistics company or whatever it is you sell and give them that give them what they know need to know to purchase and buy and love your products <clears throat> so this is a great question so um how did i so when I wasn't positioned as an expert or I didn't feel that you had the expertise, how did I go about writing content? So this is really powerful and this is really important. The, the easy thing for me to say is focus on what you're an expert in. Now you are an expert in something. There's something in your life that you've done up to this point that you have more experience and more of an understanding than other people do. So just start there. There's also the idea that you need to go become an expert. And how do experts become experts? They read all of the books. They watch all of the videos. They go survey absolutely everything. You can start a podcast that interviews every single expert in your field and you you will learn as you're creating content because you're interviewing experts, right? You can do book reviews and book summaries of every single book on your niche and you can then learn through the content that you're consuming and you can do a review on that content. The other side of this coin is 
you can create your niche and your your kind of platform around something that you your biggest problem essentially and you can then document your path of solving that biggest problem right so if if your problem is that you're 30 pounds overweight and you really want to be 160 pounds but you weigh 194 pounds you can document your process of what you're doing your gym days your dietary things the different things that you're doing the supplements that you're trying you can document the process and then your blog becomes literally this like it's it's a log it's a web log of your process. So when someone finds you and you're like fit as, right, you're ripped at this point, you're 165 pounds and chiseled, they can look back and be like, wow, he was flabby just like I was, right? And then they can follow your process and having that documented is so valuable of proof. Uh, I think those are the best ideas I've got right there. <clears throat> so if content is solid, how do you help build trust signals on newer sites? Tougher when people don't know the subject you're educating them about. How do you build trust signals on newer sites? So trust signals on newer. So it sounds like you're asking newer sites. I'm thinking means outside sites. So you could do guest publishing where you go create guest posts on other people's content. You can essentially do podcasting as a guest, find those podcasts that have your audience there and go educate them, right? Find the people who have your audience and who don't understand what you understand about things and build a relationship with them. Find them on Instagram, start sending them direct messages, letting them know that you are, you're watching their content, you think their content's great, et cetera, et cetera. And really, I think uh, those kinds of ideas are the best way to go about it here. Um, I'm gonna go this way. I think we're gonna run with us hanging out and I'm gonna look at these, um, these questions myself. So can you do the 90 day subject on something that you don't know about from noob to expert? Probably not. I mean, you could try it ditch digger. Um, but like what's going to happen is you need to be able to be confident in moving forward and creating the content. So it's always best to do content creation on something you're at least incredibly passionate about, but it's best when you have a good level of expertise with it. And the reason for this is people will sense it, right? If you're like, oh, um, and then I think you do, um, oh, um, they're gonna sense it right away and they're out. Your content will not resonate. But when you stand in your truth with an open heart and you really bring what you're meant to bring to the world out through you, that's great. Now, with that said, I just talked about the, the kind of like tracking your process. Don't claim you know what's going on at the beginning. Stand in your power of being you know, if it's the, the flabby example, be like, look, I'm, I'm 45 pounds overweight and I am going to get here and you're going to be able to come along with me. Or if you're like, I'm going to be making a million dollars online, it's going to take me 25 years and I'm going to document every day of my 25 year process to make a million dollars online. Go for it. Just be honest. The fake it till you make it stuff. People can smell it in a heartbeat and it does not work. Jim Carlin question in your mega post. Do I link to existing posts or do I embed the videos in the post? Both. I embed the videos because Google likes multimedia content. I need to add Pinterest pin images in there so I can get this content on Pinterest to get it to go viral and get reach on Pinterest. But ultimately I like to create my own webs of content within my own website. So when I mention a topic that I have another blog post on, I absolutely link those together. Every link that goes out of my page, I make it so it opens it in a new tab. And my reason is I don't want to disturb the reader's experience. I want them to be able to read halfway through, see something that interests them, click on it. And I don't want the page they're on to change. I want it to open in a new tab so they can finish reading this. Theoretically, they can open two or three tabs and they can kind of lay out a plan of content consumption through my content. Um, that down the rabbit hole idea, right? I want to enable them to go down the rabbit hole of my content and I want to make it as easy as possible for them. Um, the one other thing that I'm not doing on these mega posts that I probably will soon is I'll probably pull the MP3 file off of the videos and then I'm going to take that MP3 file and put it on SoundCloud. I'm going to link that SoundCloud link back to my main post and then I'll embed the audio inside of my post as well, adding to the multimedia kind of value of the post, creating 
creating a little bit bigger of a web of content, right? Then I'll have the YouTube, because my YouTube videos link back to it, and then I'll have the, the audio on SoundCloud and just create this kind of web of trust, essentially. So when Google find my post and they find all these other social media things, they're like, wow, this is just a giant web of awesome. This is the biggest web of awesome on said topic. Boom, I get to rank higher in the search engines. Um, happy to be doing this. Thank you for being here. Um, Let's see, question, my opinion, what are the different content marketing should be done? Logistics, I already answered that one. So a 90 day challenge, there's no site. Um, it's it's just essentially the 90 day challenge idea is something that I've, I've been promoting through the videos. It's the idea of we just need to start putting out content. I don't actually have a post on it. I'll probably create one now because I've got a lot of updates on my YouTube channel about the 90 day challenge. But the idea is once you know your niche, you need to start creating more than you consume. You need to produce more content than you consume. And the best way to do that is to kind of go overboard on content creation for the first 90 days. And that's one video every day, seven days a week for 90 days. I ended up doing it for 120 days. Um, I got sick at one point to the point where I could barely talk and I still did videos. I flew across the Pacific Ocean two separate times. One travel day was almost 40 hours of travel. And at one point I did a road trip uh, three or four states that took 20 plus hours of driving and three days. So if you think you're busy, I'm busy too. Uh, all of this while building and growing my business, right? Like I have a full-time business, two businesses with my my wife that we run. So all of that was going on in my life. And I still did a video every single day. I attended a four day conference. So that's the whole idea is just create, create, create. Um, I'm learning a new skill. Can I create a channel? Yes, absolutely. Rosia, I think it's a great idea to document your process of learning the, the skill, but just be honest with where you're at. You could see it. Um, there's a dance video. Like a lot of people do videos of themselves dancing and they'll do like year one, year two, and you can follow the progression and people love seeing the progression. There's um, Joseph Campbell, uh, who's a, a writer and a, a educator, a philosopher about uh, myths, there's that zero to hero idea. And if you watch any great movie in Hollywood, there it's like a zero to hero. It's the the attractive character who doesn't know if he can do it. And then life hits him and it goes down. Oh, it's challenging. And then boom, this happens. And all of a sudden, they, they, things just catch. And you, you kind of like going through that zero to hero arc, the character arc with that individual, that would be you in this situation we kind of like see they're, they're real, they mess up like we do, just like my last YouTube live video, right? It, it brings this depth of reality to it that people appreciate and it makes it feel like, wow, if they could do it and go from this to this, I could do that too. And that's what you want people to feel. If people just look at you and it's that guru on the mountain kind of thing and it's like, I'm the greatest internet marketer ever, you shall never be as good as me, pay me thousands of dollars and I might teach you what I know. Like that's total BS because it puts this separation. But if I'm right here with you, goofing up on my videos, looking awkward in my first videos, getting better and better and better, right? Go watch my early videos if you haven't. Then you can see like, wow, this is that's how it works because everyone sucks when they do something for the first time. If you wanna humble yourself, go surfing. You watch surfers who are really good and it's like, wow, that's beautiful. It looks so easy. Then you get in the water on a knee high wave and you try to paddle into this thing, it is the most awkward thing in the world, right? Snowboarding, the same thing. Every great snowboarder spent at least a day or two, probably more like a week or two or a month or two on their ass, right? Bruising themselves, falling all the time. What happens is we just disassociate those early days and we see the event, we see the great surfer dropping in a pipeline, wowed, and then we go try in a knee high wave and it doesn't work and we're like, oh man, that's a disconnect. Ah, oh, this sucks, this is too tough. But when we see that process of somebody getting better and better and better and better, it kind of encourages us to try and engage with the process as well, which is super powerful. Um, all right, so Nyanga, I own a private university in your country. Wow, that's amazing. I absolutely think it's a good idea to put your lectures free online to get students. Look at what I've done here, right? Like I've put every single piece of content I could ever imagine for free. When I tried to put it all, when I was thinking I was gonna put it all as products, this, that, the other, I never did anything, right? Because then I, oh, well, I gotta get my product done, I gotta get this done, and finally I was like, you know what? This needs to get out to the world. If you, I don't know what country you're in, like how, how high do you hold the regard of the betterment of your country, right? If that's your why of helping your country become more educated, which can create a stronger economy, which can create a stronger country for your grandkids and their kids and their kids, absolutely. That to me is 100% the way to go um, and see what's going on. <clears throat> so 
We have a landing page request, so I need to go in here and switch out Fluid Frame, getting a little uh, landing page love. Thank you for submitting that. And if you do try to submit your, um, if you do try to submit your landing page, just write out uh, the dot or put a space in it because YouTube won't let you put a URL in. So let us take a look here and. So this is going to be an opt-in page. So rockyourspot.com forward slash yard. Are you kids wanting more screen time? So great. Starting with a question is brilliant. Personally, I wouldn't have this black box around it because your eye gets kind of trapped in there, right? I think get rid of the the line around it, get rid of that. Just black text on white is perfect, but it's great to lead with a question. Our brain works in questions, so it, it engages me. This is awesome also, like, do you have a plan? Like, are you ready for this? Because their brain's gonna answer this. So this is a really smart starting point. I just, I think the readability is a little tough with these huge contrasting colors. Um, so are your kids wanting the obvious answer for 90% of people is yes. Do you have a plan to help your kid? The answer to this is no. And at this point they're, they're like, I need one, right? They know that they have had an aha moment that literally now you offer your free guide, they're gonna want the free guide. This is absolutely brilliant. Um, I think this would work wonders. So then enter your email address below so we can send you your free guide right away. I would consider not uh, capturing their name to make it that much easier for them to submit. It's not a big deal. Um, most people are used to the, we all know that, that we can auto insert the name. Uh, I've never, I don't collect name and I don't, I just say, hey there. Um, hey, you, how's it going, buddy? Right, like you just come up with ideas. Um, this is brilliant, man. I think this is ready. So you got it a lot. You have longer text, which I think is great. Um, not even needed. Uh, great to have the picture of you and the family on here, like total credibility. I would even consider uh, putting the family picture up. I would make this picture a click pop. Humans click pictures, man. It's crazy. So I would just make this do the same exact thing. And I would consider moving the picture up to the top. But these are little things. All that really matters is this, because this is what loads above the fold. And I love the fact that your button shows up above the fold. This is absolutely ready for traffic. Obviously, make sure your, your tracking stuff's in place. Um, great work. I think that's absolutely brilliant. So you get an A plus on that for taking action and getting it going. And um, yeah, like just, I'd love to see, I want to hear what your results are. Um, fun fact, we got a, a viewer who's been taking action recently. And at first he ran his Facebook ads. He was getting a 5% conversion on day one. He, he hit me with a message in the comments. He was like, oh goodness, this is scary, right? I have 5% 5, 5 conversion rate. What do I do? And it was day one. It's like, you know, Facebook takes two to three days to get you the right traffic the right audience in a conversion-based uh, campaign. By day three, he was converting 25% of visitors to his page into leads. He was getting 22 cent leads. He has not even put together a product yet, but he's like, dude, if I have a product in with my numbers, like even at a low conversion rate, that should be profitable. He wanted to test the lead gen side first. He's building a list, 22 cents a lead. Epic. So it, it works and he's never done this before. And all he's done is followed uh, the videos that I've put out there. So it's it's pretty freaking cool if you ask me. Sheila, can I get can I still get good traffic doing 90 day multimedia articles that are a thousand words per article? Yes. I I, I recommend um I don't like to recommend a minimum of words, Sheila. I like to recommend pour your heart into it. Make it a complete idea. If that happens to be 700 words, great. If it happens to be 3,422 words, great. Neil Patel has done a study that his blog posts that he do, does at over 3,000 words get significantly more traffic than his blog posts he does that are less than 3,000 words. But you don't necessarily have the opportunity and the time to do a 3,000 word post every day. Here's what happens with phase two in your situation. Again, right, 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 right. The big goal is to get that out, make each post based on one topic focused on one main keyword. Then when you've done your 90 day challenge, you can kind of take a step back and you can kind of survey, okay, what's been done? What did I do? What blog posts work together? And you can actually start to combine them. And when you combine them and you do a little 301 redirect, so let's say you have post A, B, and C that are all about one topic and you take post A as your core page and you add B and you add C to it, you would 301 redirect URL B and C to URL A. 
Super simple stuff. It's 301 redirect. Super simple stuff to do. But what it does is it essentially tells Google that this post is now here. This post is now here. So you won't lose any SEO mojo from having that. But now you've just merged those three topics that are three angles of the same thing into one massive post. You didn't have to really geek out and write the massive post at one point. It evolved through phase two. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. And, and really, I think, you know, my wife and I, when we started our first website, all we did were we were doing 500 word posts. We were just, just going. And now we're still in this day going all the way back to those old posts where we're adding videos, we're merging, we're adding audio files, we're adding Pinterest images, we're just turning them into multimedia posts. And Google loves seeing us kind of put more energy and love into those older posts, right? They don't want us to publish a post and then forget about it forever. Google wants us to kind of continue to grow it over time. Um, so yeah, I, I say run with it. And if you're a writer, write, it's beautiful. So next question. My client is selling an audiobook and is number one in multiple categories on Amazon. What would you suggest creating the content on? He's in the religion niche. Religion stuff. Cover the content that's in the book, right? Like cover those ideas in small little bits and pieces and work them around. So if you're enrolled in KDP, you cannot republish your content elsewhere. But if you're not enrolled in KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing, you can literally go repost your blog posts inside or your book chapters as blog posts if you want, right? We have, my wife and I, two of our books are 100% free on our website and they're on Amazon and they still sell on Amazon all the time and they're still available free on our site because some people search Google for things, some people search Amazon for things. So it's worth it to show up in both places. But like, like it's just, just be logical, right? If, if, it's, if that's his niche, have him keep talking about things that are in his niche. Like, just go for it. Um, where can I find a free mailer? You can't pay for a mailer. It's a very important um, process. Get a Weber. You need someone who's going to manage your deliverability. Think about it. If there's a free mailer out there that kind of works, every spammer in the world is going to use it. They're going to blow it up. They're going to destroy it. And in that situation, it's over, right? Like their deliverability is going to go down because the spammers will kill it. So hi, Miles. It seems like you agree with Gary Vee that the way to go is putting out useful content. Um, where do I disagree with Gary V? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think we're pretty on page. He's much more brand focused. I'm, I'm still a quant in his eyes, right? He talks shit about quants and that's me in many regards, but yeah, my wife happens to run the brand side. Um, um, I just, I'm not that into the startup scene. I think that's the difference is I'm trying to enable individuals to create like laptop businesses that you could take with you in the world, anywhere in the world. You could travel with your kids. You could do a three month road trip with your family. As long as you got your laptop and your cell phone, you can run your business. He's definitely a little bit more in the tech space. Um, but, but really overlapping ideas for sure. So Mike, uh, which social network is most effective in sharing the content? The social network that has your audience, right? So if you have young people as your audience, 18 to 24, Snapchat and Instagram are going to be better social networks. If you have baby boomers who are 50 to 65 years old, Facebook is going to be a great place to put your content because that's where all the grandparents are trying to see pictures of the grandkids. Um, now, with that said, if you have women who are in their 30s to 50s who are affluent, if that's who you're targeting, Pinterest is absolutely the spot. And with all of that said, do all of them. It's a lot of work and each one needs native content. Your Pinterest image is shaped different than your Instagram image is shaped different than your Facebook image and you need unique ones for all of those platforms. But ultimately, you do want to be everywhere. Um, but if you have to limit it, do some basic understanding of who's your customer avatar, who's your target market, what age, where are they, and then simply kind of get your content there, right? Like put your content in front of the people on the platforms that have the people who you want to see your content. Um, Pierre, what's going on? I have targets on Facebook, likes, comments, fans, but you don't have their mail in order to create that. So if you have, you have targets, um, so first of all, you can create a audience based on people who have engaged, right? So you can go create a custom audience based on people who have engaged. You can also display your ads to people who 
have liked your fan page. So those are two audiences you do have access to immediately. And then what I would probably do at that point is start building a list, right? And get your conversion pixel in place or in your custom conversion in place and set up lookalike audiences based on your custom conversions. Um, do you have traffic to your website? Because that is a list right there that you could retarget and you can create lookalikes off of people who have visited your list. If you have at least a thousand visits to your, to your site that with the pixel maturity in the last six months. Um, if not, start driving traffic, get them to your site, get them on your list, get their email address so you can engage in that process. Um, Kelly James, document the process. Kelly James gets it. Um, let's see here. How to rank local SEO clients. Content, like you gotta do a lot of content, right? You gotta talk about the, the local uniqueness of, of that niche and your local target market. Um, I would also say that you gotta make sure you have your local address in the footer and you do wanna do citations and the Google My Business. Learn how to optimize Google My Business, which is the Google platform for a local business. And then um, really make sure, go do some basic citations. For example, submitting your website to Yelp, submitting your website to TripAdvisor, submitting your website or owning your page on TripAdvisor, owning, claiming your page on Yelp. Uh, the yellow pages, if you can get a free listing on the yellow pages, look for those local directories that allow you to get your business name, URL, phone number, and address in them. Those are called citations. And get them on the really good ones. Don't get crappy citations. Get like the, the mainstream citations. And that all reinforces your business's location. And Google will kind of add you to the map pack, that, map pack that way. All right, there was a change in the YouTube algorithm and there's concerns that new YouTube channel, it favors that isn't evergreen 24 hours after a launch, a lot of traffic is required to trigger the algorithm. Any opinion? Um, YouTube's gonna always change the game. Google has changed so many algorithms in the day and age since I've started, it's absurd. Uh, I lived through the boom and bust and boom and bust of the Google era. Um, don't try anything shady put out more content, go, go, go. People who sit and think about things, these things aren't taking action. People who take action get results, right? Like there are so many people who told me, oh, well, the internet marketing space, it's too saturated. You're never gonna grow an audience. Ah, oh, it's tough. It's already been done, blah, blah, blah. I did it anyways because it's in my heart and I'm still doing it because I'm not doing it for the results. The results are the byproduct. I'm doing it because I have to share this with you or I don't feel right, right? It's in my DNA, it's in my soul. Part of why I'm here is to share this information with the world, so that's what I'm doing. And the reason I'm doing it is very selfish in that sense, that it's it's what's inside of me and I have to get this out, right? I'm not doing this for traffic, for money. It's a different perspective. And when you get to that point of, I have a message that I need to get out to the world and you identify what that is within yourself and you focus on that and that is your main priority. Who cares about what the algorithm does, the this, the that, you will find the right people. Um, I have noticed a wee downturn in my YouTube traffic. I don't care, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything, right? The goal is I'm gonna be doing videos very consistently for five years plus. That's what I wanna see happen because in my main business, when we were creating content every day, it took three, four, five years for that to turn into a real business. Like this stuff, it takes work. It takes massive amounts of work. We have to outwork all of our competitors and the algorithm is going to change back and then they'll change it again and then they'll change it again. And it's, it's pretty much a constant. So I don't, I don't think about that, to be honest. I just kind of keep moving forward, keep playing my game, keep racing my race and everything works from there. I don't ping Google robots to my posts. I believe it's built into, um, I believe it's built into WordPress to automatically ping the main bots. But I guess, so I do comment on some relevant blogs uh, from time to time. Those are usually no follow, but I, I just, um, I don't concern myself with backlinks or pinging the the YouTube, the Google spiders. If you want, go to pingomatic.com and ping it. I wouldn't ping it all the time, but um, pingomatic is kind of one. LinkedIn for B2B leads, what are my thoughts? Sounds like a great opportunity, right? If you want B2B and your people are on LinkedIn, then get your message in front of those people. I know a lot of people who do well with the LinkedIn um, paid stuff, but I know a lot of people who do well with just putting content out on LinkedIn as well. Uh, some people run groups on LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn's pretty spammed out, so you have to make sure that you're coming from a standpoint of giving value first, deliver results in advance. But yeah, I mean, if, if LinkedIn is where your B2B clients are, that's the best place for you to be. Nice, Bernhardt Construction, been rolling with multiple pieces of content every day, documenting the creative. That's huge. I mean, if you're doing remodels, if you're 
If you go into an ugly house, if you're working for a flipper and you can document the process and show people. So someone who's thinking about remodeling their kitchen, I don't know what that is, like 20, 30 grand. Like if they want to take it to the T, I bet somebody could drop 50 cents. Well, I mean, I bet somebody could drop a million on it, but like, you know, relatively normal people might drop 20 to 50 grand. Like that's a big thing. They might be taking out a housing line of credit. That's a huge idea for them. They might be tapping into a 401k or something. So for them to be able to go into your content and see what you do and see how meticulous you are and see the ups and downs and follow that, they're going to build a relationship with themselves, with you. By the time they call you, they're already going to be sold on you because they know you show up on time. They've seen your customer testimonials. They've seen how your team works. It's like the have you ever seen the the treehouse guy on uh, Animal Planet, right? Like anybody who want in this world who wants to get like an epic fifty thousand dollar treehouse built, they call him. Why? Because they've seen his shows. They see how well they work together. They've seen him mess some stuff up too, right? It ain't all perfect, but they just they they've built a relationship in their mind with that treehouse guy, and they got to have him because they've watched his show. And you have the power to do that. So good on you. That sounds absolutely fantastic that you've been doing it. I love hearing that. Um, Comments are not showing. I don't know. Um, your comments are showing, Hassan. They showed now. It's okay. Cool. So after the 90 days, how often do you suggest? Like, honestly, every day. Uh, so bodies after babies, after the 90 days, how often do you suggest at minimum per week to keep posting seven times a week, right? Like my goal with the 90 day challenge is to trick you into seeing that you can do it. So then you do 120 and then you just keep going because that is literally the path to success. Now I know that life happens and whatnot. Ultimately, I think the best move is to find a schedule that works best for you and stick with it. So at this point, I've been doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday videos. I've popped on some Saturdays. I've been really spending my Tuesdays and Thursdays trying to create the, the phase two content that I'm now obviously sharing with you. And I embark on kind of an adventure here next week. So my publishing schedule might change. It might stay the exact same. It's all about figuring out what you can do. And I would never sacrifice the quality for the quantity, right? So if you do need to scale back a little bit to do three days a week or four days a week, I think three to four a week is, is powerful. Um, think about your target market, right? If you're talking to business people and they're in the office Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's a pretty good schedule. If you're talking to parents, and their kids do the Saturday morning cartoon thing and you can catch them at 7 a.m. every Saturday, boom, make sure your post goes live at that time, right? Think about who they are, where they are, the times that work for them and when you might be able to catch them uh, and their attention, but ultimately, it's a, it's a marathon runner's pace. And my marathon runner pace will be very different from uh, a professional marathon runner's pace. The marathon professional is gonna be doing seven days a week. I'm only gonna be able to keep this pace. I need to know what works for me because the ultimate goal is to maintain my energy well enough to be able to hit that finish line that's 26.2 miles away, which is an absolute lifetime away for me as a runner, right? The thought of that's just, it's a great analogy for me. So it's all about finding that pace that you can hold for the next two years, three years, because that follow through is really where the ultimate success comes in. And when I'm talking ultimate success, I'm talking like the, the hubby is retiring and becoming a house dad, you know, like that level of success ca can come within a few years of really staying on the throttle. And if you got to ease off the throttle a little bit, it might be five years, but like we got to live life for five years anyways. Why not? put these little assets out and build a big website asset and a YouTube asset, et cetera, through the course of that time. Um, the challenge is when people don't have that strong commitment, they get wishy-washy about their schedule. Ah, oh, kind of maybe I'll do two this, ah, oh, maybe I'll do three that week. Like kind of have to have the hat over the fence. You gotta have something that's like, no, I have to do it today. You gotta have leverage on yourself to where if you're at two posts and you guaranteed your audience, you were gonna mail them or you're gonna hit them up four times a week. Like you need something that's gonna push you because it's so easy to just feel tired and not want to do it. Um, thank you for the compliment, Kelly. I appreciate it. Audio MP3 doesn't have any SEO benefits. True. A backlink from, so an audio MP3 doesn't, that, that's just false. Like D card, I hate to break it to you, but you're, you're incorrect. So an audio MP3 can hold metadata. An audio MP3 is, I mean, that's like saying a podcast doesn't have SEO benefit, which is wrong. So I'm getting a potentially a backlink. I'm creating a bigger web. Um, it's also for user experience. Not everything's done for SEO. 
Um, one video, five days a week is all I can handle. Perfect. Kelly, run with it. Then just do that. I know people who, um, Eric Warre, who has built probably the biggest network marketing education company that's worth like tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, something crazy. He has done five videos a week, Monday through Friday for like four or five years. And he literally built the biggest education. He went from nobody to building the biggest education kind of platform in the network marketing industry in about five years doing that exact thing. Sorry, by trust signals, I meant how often do you show people that other people value your info? Look at the other people, trust me, you should trust me too, sort of things. I don't, I let my content speak for myself. Horses are expensive. So the trusting, like I have a sharing plugin. I let people share stuff, but I just, I don't go out of my way to try to trigger any signals. I'm just like, I'm going to put out the absolute best content on this topic. I'm going to move the free line farther than anyone's been willing to move it. I'm going to disrupt the industry by giving away all the information that people are trying to charge $500 to $2,000 worth. And when people find it, they feel it, they sense it, they know it, and they're there. They know they found someone they could trust. That's my goal. Not trust, not indicators on how many shares or social likes or any of that. I just don't care about that. Um, to me, that's the byproduct of great content. So I just, I say solely focused on just, just the best content I can. Um, how do you ensure the emails land in the inbox of your subscriber? That's a great question. So number one, use a reputable um, emailer. So use Aweber, for example. Number two, use plain text emails. Number three, don't add any images. Don't add any HTML to your emails and don't use any spammy phrases, right? And then test it and send it to yourself. But just think of writing an email on a broadcast just like you would write an email to a friend. I sent out an email this morning and it was like nine lines of text. And it's like, hey, are you around this morning? Great, let's go chat, hang out online. Here's the link, talk to you later. And I just send it, no HTML, nothing. And it hit the inbox every time. And that's because it doesn't look, it doesn't have HTML headers because it looks like a normal email. And that's what you want yours to be is it needs to just look like a normal email. Um, when do I think the proper time is to start a conversion campaign? The moment you have your conversion pixel in place and you have a funnel built, that's when you start a conversion campaign. If you go to my Facebook post, I link to a video where the engineers at Facebook say clearly starting a paper engagement campaign first to season your pixel is false. That doesn't work. When you then go create a new campaign that's conversion, all of that data resets and all of the conversion data is based at the ad set level. So if you want the results of a conversion-based campaign, you need to start a conversion-based campaign. All other campaigns do not add to the value of a conversion-based campaign. So start right away. Um, cool, glad people liking it. I'm stoked on that. Yes, share your landing page here. I will be happy to look at it. Um, Awesome. I'm so bodies after baby. Exactly. You made things real and it gave me the courage to actually do the channel. Awesome. I think it's great that that's my goal, right? I want to put the content out to help your brain, that logic, have the how to nuts and bolts. Like, how do I do this? How do I do that? Right. But ultimately I want you to see what I've done and follow my progress of awkward videos, shadows, and like the camera was all in my face and my first videos were so bad and they're gonna be there for eternity. And I don't care because I made better videos and I made better videos and they're still getting better. And I just totally botched up a live video and I'm still gonna keep doing live videos and we all can make it through the learning curve. It's just sticking with it. Um, Totally. Fluid frame. I'm glad you liked it. Um, I'm really glad you liked the review. I think it's ready for traffic. I would just change the, the darkness. Um, Bodies After Babies likes it too. Nice landing page. It's cool. I run a small company like Trent. Can you use your services? Um, maybe. Uh, like, I just, I don't know. Um, for me to shift and think in that way, it, it messes with my ability to keep moving in my process. Um, Jim Carlin, in one of my funnel videos, I recommend having a domain email address. How do you do this? So you're gonna log into your C panel and you're gonna create an email address at your domain. So you should have access from A2 hosting to your C panel. Maybe I should make that. Um, cPanel is a hosting control panel. And if you Google how to set up an email in cPanel, you will find a bunch of tutorials because it's an open source, might not be open source, but it's it's the most widely used control panel. And you'll have access to it in within your A2 account or whatever hosting you have should have cPanel. Um, and then you just click on new email, you just type up what you want, and then you set up a forwarder so it hits your Gmail account. Uh, you could sync your Gmail account with it as well. Um, I, I'll, I'll probably put a video on that, but I, I wanna get through the split testing stuff that I'm, I'm currently working on on the DIY sales funnel. Um, okay, one second here. Can I recommend 
books. So books for products and copywriting, Dan Kennedy's Ultimate Sales Letter. Look for Eugene Schwartz's Breakthrough Advertising. Those two books are going to be pretty powerful. Um, so horses are expensive. They pay Google five bucks. Yep, Google has their apps thing, but you can run it through your hosting as well. Um, just looking for more comments. I thank you very much for them. Um, <clears throat> so Sheila, I have about 120 articles that I wrote about two years ago, but aren't keyword focused. Looks like I should focus on repurposing them before writing new articles. I would say do a little of both. Flex the muscle, creating new stuff, go back into your old stuff and rework it and tailor it towards the keywords. Don't stuff keywords in for the sake of adding the keywords. Make sure they're written in great English and they flow within the sentences and are very human readable. Google's getting more and more, getting better and better at understanding what's human readable and what's done for SEO purposes. So you wanna err on the side of being human readable. Now, when you go into these old posts, add more content to them, right? So go into an old post. We call this the forest method, pruning the forest method. And this is what my wife and I are doing because we did so many 500 word posts back in 2011, 2012, 2013. We're now going back into them. We're adding 500,000, 2,000 new words of content. We're adding videos that are relevant to them. And you can even use videos from other people if you want to just embed a video and you don't want to go create the video. Um, we then make it a larger post. We make sure that they're optimized in the Yoast plugin, the keywords, we kind of double check the keywords, we add the Pinterest images. Then when we save them, we save them as brand new. We change the publish date to today. So we're taking a five, six, seven year old article and we're moving it to the front of our blog roll, which means it's gonna get picked up by the search engine spiders when they return to our website earlier. And it's gonna signal them that this is now a new and improved post with all this extra content. They re-index it and they kind of adjust at that level. And, and that's been working really well for us. So I would do a little bit of both. Um, <clears throat> bodies after babies, you are welcome. So answer your question, I'm like where I want to push, 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 and I'm sure it can go, get faster how you film, edit. Yeah, so the more comfortable you get with the process of filming and editing and literally like getting out the content, the easier it is. So one thing you probably noticed in my videos is there's minimal editing. In some of these, um, the DIY sales funnel videos, since I'm showing like, I don't know, I'm showing, I'm having to blur things out and it, I'm putting way more time into post-production than I've ever done. The first 90 to 120 videos was literally me talking on my cell phone. And if I got halfway through that video and I like botched it all up or I just like totally brain dead and just, uh, I would stop the video and I would start 100% new. And my reason was because if I had to get there and edit and render and that, I wouldn't do it. That's a know myself thing. If you're comfortable editing, great. But I had to get, I essentially had to get the process, the production process in alignment with how I know I operate. And I'm either gonna like show up, make it happen, bang it out, boom, send it out to the world, or I'm not. And if I don't, it would never happen. So I had to kind of like leverage that to myself to make it happen. And now that I did that 100, 200 times, I'm able to kind of be a little more meticulous and make a couple of edits where it's gonna improve the quality. But ultimately, I think it's more about getting the message out and just flexing that muscle, right? I don't have the best like barbell curl form, but I'm doing my barbell curls every day. And that's my goal here. Um, Cool, so Hassan, we have a landing page coming up. So let me share my screen and we're gonna go to this landing page here. So let's take a look. And so when I started doing conversion rate optimization and landing page stuff, I literally studied and I watched people do landing pages reviews nonstop because I learned more from hearing about tips and things for others that I didn't even have to submit mine. I was in a membership program where we could submit them. So first thing I'm noticing, I can't really read it. So what happens is we have, a, we're having a conflict here with the back, right? The text behind, the image behind and this, I definitely cannot read this. So your readability is pretty bad. And at this point I've had one, oh God, fuck. So one, two, three, we had something pop up here, four, we had five pop-ups and we have this down here. Way too much going on. You're absolutely overwhelming me. My instinct was to hit the back button. Here it is again. Like my instinct is just to leave. Like it's just things are happening at me and I'm not comfortable with that. Now this isn't a landing page. Like this is your homepage, right? So there's no actual action 
here for me to do. A landing page is a page that offers someone to take an action. So I guess you want me to click shop now. I don't really know why. Why not just show your products there if that's what you ultimately want me to do? It looks like that's what's going on here is you're showing the products below. But like sign up to your mailing list. This is weak. You need calls to action that are going to like, like only pay for shipping. Like what am I going to get out of this, right? Like it should be like, what's the, if I'm a cyclist and I'm on your website, why are you better than Amazon? What are you going to offer me? How is this going to improve my life? How am I going to feel superior to my other cycling friends and our little herd of cyclists that like to get in the way of all the people, right? Like they all want to feel exclusive. They want to feel cooler than their friends. So really uh, that's going to be all we're going to do here. Cause this actually isn't a landing page. That's actually just a homepage. Um, so at the end of 121, nice, Tom Johnson. So Tom Johnson has done 121 videos in 121 days. I think that's amazing. So do I think it's better to focus on building more traffic and build out an email list or actually focus on selling stuff as in offer a course, et cetera? Email list, email list, email list. To me, the biggest asset you're going to create in your business is the email list because your first product might be good, might not be good. You might do second product, might be totally different than the first product. Like, I really think that having that list allows you to invite people to get early access to your course at a significantly discounted rate. Um, it just, it gives you this kind of audience to bounce ideas off of. And it gives you that, I don't want to say pressure because it's not pressure, but it gives that kind of like knowing. So I've got a list. My list is like 800 people now. And I go email. I, I really think about this. Like these are 800 people who know me. They like me enough to subscribe. They trust me. I honor that relationship. And now I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta come up with something new. I gotta come up with something great for them. And the philosophy here is if I give enough value to, it's the Zig Ziglar, quote, right? If you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. And I think getting them to opt into the email list opens up that opportunity for you to give more. And it opens up that legal way for you to stay in communication with them for life. The thing about an email list is once you get that going, you have to email them at least a couple times a week, if not three times a week, because people, you'll go out of mind. People have a lot of different, there's a lot of noise in the inbox and you got to focus on giving, right? That law of attraction idea. You got to give more than you ask. And what you can do when you build your list is once you start building out your course, you can say to your list something really cool like, hey, I'm going to be launching this product. It's going to take me a month to create all the modules. It's going to be five module course on this. When it's done, it's going to sell for $297. But if you're interested in joining me through the process as I create each module and you're willing to give me feedback to help me make that course better, I'll give you lifetime access to all versions for $47. And what will happen is a few, at least a few people are going to take you up on that. And that's the over the fence, right? Now you have people paying for it. You promised it would be out by the end of the month. And there's that leverage on self to really get it done. And then you could create like a private Facebook group and you could, or you could just have comments on there, et cetera. And you create a feedback loop to get the actual customer feedback on things. I would probably wait till I have a list of about a thousand people to, to pull something like that off. And I just, in looking back at Melanie and my business and all the businesses I built, it, the relationship with the list is really truly the asset and that relationship grows via giving value through the list. So that like activity that we want to do to truly grow the asset is giving value to the list. So you got to have a list for that. And then product in the way I just mentioned can be, I mean, that's a huge value position, right? That's a give. If you're literally going to give them your be all end all investing course, how to retire early and not be annoyingly frugal course, right? It's a $300 course. You give it to them for 47 bucks. Like that's a huge opportunity. You're not even selling. You're just like, Hey, I'm going to do this. Are you interested? So really, I think it's important to, um, build the list. And I think that goes for just about everybody. Um, so best bong, uh, want to change your host from GoDaddy. Oh goodness. Good call. Um, I recommend a two. I'm going to go ahead and just put in my, my link to a two. If you're interested, um, I think they will even, uh, move your site for you. So the WordPress site.
But yeah, like I, I think A2 is great. Um, it, I've had great success. I've had people who were like, wow, I had to contact support and they got back with me super fast and they really stand behind it. They're not owned by one of the mega corporations. GoDaddy is one of the mega corporations and these mega corporations, they're they're just, their support slacks and they stuff way too many sites on a machine. Uh, PKR Treasure, what digital marketing online courses would I recommend? Advanced marketing program, Neil Patel, no. Digital Marketing Mastery Plan, Ryan Dice, no. Quick Spout University, no. These are all way too too big of names. And the reason I say that is these people have their heads in the clouds. They do not understand where we are at. Ryan Dice is trying to build a billion dollar a year business with digital marketers. So what he thinks is relevant in, in the internet marketing world is not what we're doing. Neil Patel, he, that dude is lost, man. Like that guy, I don't know if he did a bunch of, like those smiley pictures of him in his pajamas, just, I can't handle that guy at all. In my honest opinion, it's the authority hacker guys. Um, I'll send you a link to it. They teach, and it depends, right? Like if you want to do content marketing, if you want to build an authority site, they have kind of two levels. They've got their, their like how to start an authority site. And then they've got their, their full on pro level. Um, I'll send, just go check out their webinar. And the reason I say this is they're smaller, you get more intimate access to them, they're giving more valuable content, they're in the nuts and bolts building these kinds of WordPress sites that you and I are building. Ryan Dice is not building these things anymore. He's got a huge office, right? Neil Patel is not doing the work anymore. He gets it at a philosophical level, and I think it's so important for me and people at our level, right, beginner to where I'm at, like we need to learn from practice practitioners, not philosophers. And everyone you mentioned there is a philosopher in the space. And that's a big problem in my opinion, because those philosophies start to kind of like, there, there becomes a gap between the philosophy and the physical nuts and bolts of what's going on in the day and age. Um, so let me just send you real quick. So that's the basic kind of starting point, I think, of, of their product. I just sent it over to you. Um, I hope that that makes sense. And that's just my opinion. I know people who've gone through those courses and had great success. I just went through Ryan Dice. I went to their Ryan Dice's Digital Marketer event. I bought into their, their certification program, and it's just a lot of BS, man. A lot of non-actionable content that he charges a lot for. Ruben McCoy, aside from having expertise, can you tell us anything more about finding your voice to develop content? Brilliant question. And any negative experiences that may have resulted from publishing your ideas? Awesome questions, Ruben. So what I'm sensing here is that feeling, and I wanna, um, am I on screen? Cool, let's, I, it's heart to heart moment here. Um, I'm just changing my screen share over. So what I'm sensing is the feeling and the observation of the word vulnerability, right? And that is, 100% the truth. That is why I was not willing to put out content on this topic for literally 15 years, right? Full-time online since 2010. Didn't put out my first video on how to do this stuff till 2016. Most people like go watch a Facebook course and then they go create their own Facebook course and try to sell for $3,000 like the next day with no practical application. So there was a confidence building process that I had to go through to get to where I was like, damn, I know this stuff up, down, inside, out. Like I really just got to get this out to the world. But it was that feeling of like being vulnerable, of putting my voice out there, of, of going on record at like for permanent. And like, I'm an opinionated person. I say random things. Like sometimes things come out of my mouth and I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? And it is forever, right? Even if we delete a video, like Google cached it, it's out there. So that feeling of vulnerability is natural. And I think it's important to honor that. And it's a form of resistance. If there's a book I could recommend to you, it's called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And it was a brilliant book to help my mindset shift and understand that that feeling of vulnerability is actually me resisting the process of getting it out. And it's totally normal to feel that. So finding the voice, this is one of the biggest byproducts of the 90 day challenge of doing it over and over and over and forcing yourself to do it a hundred times in the course of three to four months. And that is you will find your voice quickly. Your voice will find you quickly. It happens. And your voice might not be spoken on camera like I'm doing with you right now. Your voice might be written word. Right, so you need to know yourself and you need to understand and you need to choose the media or the medium that is in alignment with your DNA. So if, you, if you're like 
terrified to see that red light come on and know that you're on air, don't try to force yourself to do 90 videos just because I did. I did this because this was easier for me than writing a post every day. I couldn't, oh, man, in college and high school, writing up my reports and doing those like essays. Oh God, I was terrible. C's get degrees for sure. And I just hated the process of writing. And so for years, I tried to force myself to be a blogger. If you look at my blog, you can go back. Like I, I've been posting on that website probably for four years, very erratically, very stream of consciousness all over the place. And, and then it wasn't until I started doing videos, it was like, ah, oh, man, this, this fits. Like the first ones weren't great. Like I didn't really communicate the way I wanted. I didn't, it wasn't perfect, but it felt easier. And that's how I knew I had the right medium for myself to move forward with. And then I have the kind of the hose analogy, right? So on the side of your home, you probably have a garden hose. It's all coiled up, right? And you know, garden hose and you water the plants with. Well, if you let it sit all winter or for two or three years, which is kind of what we've all been doing if we're not creating content, though it just gets mucky and nasty in there. And when you turn on that hose, it is gonna flush out some disturbingly gross and dirty and brown and orange water. But here's what happens. If you let that water continue to flow, it will get clearer and clearer until you finally actually have crystal clear water flowing through that hose. And that's really an analogy for finding your voice. The first videos stumble on the words a bit or the first blog post, it, it feels it's a little different. Ah, it's kind of stumble on the words a bit. Put it out there anyways, because you've got to go through the first one to get to the second one. You got to go through the second one to get to the third one. And by the time you get to your 50th one, you're going to be making some serious progress. And a lot of the stuff that challenged you in the first ones is going to be like easy to the point of it's in your subconscious. You're not even thinking about it. And that's when you can start to think about the next level stuff. And that's when you find stuff like the Grammarly plugin for Chrome that saves my butt on your, your, or your, or you learn about the Hemingway app that you can go type in your, your blog post in Hemingway and it'll help you make your sentences easier to read. And, and you can learn about those things kind of later in the process, but it's all about getting that dirty water out of the hose first. And I think it's something that we don't find our voice through contemplation. We find our voice through speaking. Uh, and, and again, that could be a written thing and it could be through writing, right? So you got to know thyself in that, that sense, but just doing it for me, any negative experiences that may have resulted, um, no few trolls, few haters. My wife gets more haters and, and my wife has seen more haters and trolls because of the subject matter. She's in the spirituality realm. And, and sometimes there's this, this faction of religious people who think what we're doing is just yeah, we get, we get some really crazy comments. Um, so there is a little bit of a need to build a thick skin. YouTube is known for having the trolliest of the trolls, but I mean, I, I like troll back my trolls, right? If somebody's trying to troll, like I'll call them out and be like, dude, is this your first day trolling on YouTube? Like that was pretty lame. Right. And I try to, I try to just throw it back at them. And I really have not had any sort of backlash to, to the point of saying that, that like I have experienced so many benefits in, in how I feel, in my personal confidence, in my own business. One thing that this has done, one of the byproducts of this is I'm analyzing what I'm doing and how I'm doing from a whole different perspective because now every time I'm doing something and engaging in a process or going through what I used to do kind of like haphazardly, I'm now trying to, trying to like, okay, what's my system here? What's my, how do I go about this? Because I need to teach this. So it's got me looking at what I'm doing from a totally different perspective. And that has absolutely been a major benefit. Um, cash flow, uh, having a, a whole nother income source right now for my wife and I, and something that like, it's a total diversification of our income, like total, I didn't expect it. That wasn't the plan. And it, it, that's, so there's been a lot more benefits come from it. Um, the self-talk is real though. I had to push through. I had days I didn't want to publish. I had, I, I was sick for a few days. Like, and, and I think it's good to push ourselves beyond those points to, I really rewired. I did not think I was a content creator. I thought my wife was the content creator in the family. And I thought that I was just the behind the scenes guy. And here I am still talking. Obviously that's not true. Right. But, um, that's, it's fun. So I think it's, uh, really check out the book war of art by, by Pressfield. Um, brilliant book. I got on audio. I really liked it. Um, um, pretty cool. So how do I know if a niche is Saturday saturated or not? You want to quantitatively make a decision. Well, so like, I mean, isn't the internet marketing space saturated? Like here I am showing up in 2016, teaching how to like make money online and teaching internet marketing. So first of all, like go into any market that you love and go into a market that, that captures your heart and your soul more than like, trying to run it by the numbers and is it saturated or not? So if you want some ways you can, I mean, search on Google, right? Like you can do a Google search for 
um, insight colon or in title colon, then your main keyword, um, site colon, you know, you can, so you can add the keywords, uh, use the keyword tool, but like, I don't know, um, oversaturated. I just don't really think there's such a thing as oversaturation. I think there's room for your voice with that said, it has to be something you're passionate about, right? Like I'm just so passionate about this internet marketing. Like I trudged through the first hundred videos that got me this many results because I love it. Like this is fun for me getting to spend this time with you and encourage you if you're here on a holiday in the U S or even if you're not, it's not a holiday for you. And, and you decided to stay and work and focus to grow your business or grow your mindset because this is super important with you. I get to spend this time with you. I honor that. This is an, this is an opportunity for me. Like this makes me feel good. I walk away from these. I go upstairs and my wife and I go for a walk and I'm just like, bouncing, right? This, this lights me up and you need to find what lights you up, not what looks good on paper, nuts and bolts. So I guess what I would say in this situation is it sounds like you're hesitating to start because you're trying to make sure you get it right. Pick something and go forward, start publishing content, build out your WordPress site, flex the muscle. You're going to adapt and pivot on your business many, many, many times anyways. So just start, get started, be willing to adapt, start writing your content, learn how to use WordPress, get the ball rolling. And once you do see what you love, right? I just, I think it's so powerful. You got to find what you love. You got to find what's in your heart that, that whispers at your soul and says, please share this with the world. When you find that like saturation and quantitative decisions kind of go out the window, right? If you're selling something you don't truly believe in, you you got a day of reckoning coming. So I like to just try to deal with that and observe that and honor that up front to make sure that we don't kind of hit a proverbial wall in that situation. Um, cool. Horses are expensive. I'm glad to hear you like that. Um, Tom Johnson, super helpful. Not at 120 yet, but you'll get there this week. No intention to stop anytime soon. So back to bodies with babies, your question. Um, Tom was a guest on, on one of the videos. He hit the 90 day challenge. He's going to hit 120, 121 and he has no intention to stop. And he, it becomes fun. I don't know what it is. It becomes this thing where you're just like, Oh, I could do a video on that today. All right. And you get all excited about it and it's just sharing. And then you start to get the positive feedback and you really kind of feel like you're helping people with things. And like, we can all help people with something. And it's just really important to kind of like find that it, it really is a magical flow state. Um, Yeah, Neil Patel and his PJs did bother Sheila too. Like, I'm out. Anytime somebody's standing there in their PJs with a goofy smile, I, I, I'm just, I'm just done. Um, cool, best ball. I'm glad you're using the link. I really appreciate that. Um, honesty, having hesitations, publishing the videos you're creating. Yep, Vishan, Vahan, they, they, man, that self talk. Oh, am I really gonna put it up? Well, I don't know. My friends, my family, think no one's going to see your first videos. Like even my first video has maybe a hundred and something views out of 450, 500,000 views on my entire channel. It's kind of crazy at how our mind plays things up like a drunk monkey in a cage throwing bananas at us. But the reality of what happens is very different. And what happens is it's, it's you just, you got to get to video 50, you got to get to video 70, you got to get to video 90 or blog posts because that's when you really find your groove. And those are the posts that people find. You can always circle back and update and add to and, and kind of uh, improve things. Commander Shepard, yeah, right? Low ceiling. This is a, I'm in an Airbnb. This is like a basement. They call this a second bedroom. That's like all the owner's stuff. He's got like music stuff in here. Um, Airbnb issue. Um, did I read, I hope this screws up? No, but I think uh, that, that makes sense to me. Like, I hope this screws this up, right? through trial and error, through persevering and figuring out challenges that we encounter and that we create for ourselves, that is absolutely how I've built my business online. And it's because I broke things and fixed them and broke things and fixed them. I can't tell you the number of times that, man, Melanie sends like a, our, uh, an offer to our email list and I go try to update one plugin and the whole site goes down right as we emailed 50,000 people. I mean, it, it's happened more times than I'd like to admit and it's stressful. It, it is and it's challenging, but guess what I learned? I learned how to do the basics of disabling a plugin through FTP when I have to. I've learned the basics of PHP. I've learned, I've learned enough to be dangerous in a lot of little things and I've learned to host with a company that I can send an email to and they're right there, right? Like I've learned that I need to be in touch with the right kind of, uh, I need to get the right service providers on my team in order to make sure that um, 
if and when things happen, they're right there. And that's why I left some of the EIG owned hosting companies because a site goes down for a server error and I had to wait on hold for 20 minutes to even talk to someone. Whereas with where I'm at now, when something, when a problem happens, the problem is usually like, like they respond to my ticket within five minutes, let alone fix the problem within the time it took for me to even get somebody on the line. So yeah, it's, um, it is a process of messing things up. And I hope I talk about that enough because I think I make things sound easy because I've done, I've just broke everything so many times that I've, I've learned how to fix it. Um, I used to rebuild cars when I was younger, when I had a garage at the parents' house, I've rebuilt um, some old Datsuns and some old cars. And like, how did I learn how to rebuild an engine? I blew up my engine and I had to literally, like I literally seized the engine on the way home from buying the vehicle because I ran it out of oil. And guess what? I, I learned what a crankshaft was and what the bearings do and how I seized the bearing and why I seized the bearing. Guess what? I check my oil every time now, but uh, I learned how to disassemble an entire automotive engine, which is a very complex system, which is actually a bunch of simple systems that all work together. I learned all that because I broke the freaking thing and had to put it back together. And that's how I've, I've become a master at WordPress is because I broke it so many times and put it back together and we're still alive and my wife and I still love each other and it's just the process. Um, I think that that book is probably on top of, of that. Um, Best Bong, I am determined not to chase shiny objects, but what are your thoughts on private labeling and selling on Amazon? So first of all, love the first part of your, your declaration because shiny objects, I did that for years and years. I'm a recovering opportunity seeker and that will get us nowhere. I, I'm so, such a fan of the unsubscribe button. Um, man, I just unsubscribe. I don't, no one gets access to my inbox because your inbox is other people's to-do list for you. And there's so many BS fake gurus out there selling with really good sales copy, by the way, really good email copy, by the way, that's the problem. Their email copy, their sales copy is really good, but what they're building and selling is just rubbish and it's a distraction. That said, private labeling and selling on Amazon, it's a great business model. I know at least five people who are selling their Amazon-based businesses and they're all concerned with how many people are entering the market space. Personally, I don't believe in plastic rubbish from China to sell at a hack markup. I'll also go one step beyond and say, I really like the margins of affiliate marketing and I really like the margins of um, like information-based products. Not everyone thinks they can get into information-based products, but I think they actually can. And generally speaking, I would probably look to uh, find, I would try to build something outside of the Amazon ecosystem. And I think that Amazon, I mean, Jeff Bezos is amazing. Amazon is incredible what they're doing. And at some point, Amazon is going to buy pro bypass everyone who's white labeling products and selling on Amazon. And Amazon's going to go ahead and create and establish that relationship with these factories in China themselves. And then they're gonna price cut you because they can. And that's how Amazon rolls. So right now what's happening is all these people through their FBA business and the gold rush on FBA, they're putting all these products on Amazon. At some point, Jeff Bezos is gonna be like, cool, let's pull the plug. And they're gonna go create the exact same products. They're gonna undercut people. They're gonna prioritize their listings and they're gonna lose. No one's gonna win the buy button anymore. Um, it works. I know people making, I got a buddy, 18 year old kid from New Zealand. He was he brought in $450,000 in revenue in a year. Made, I think he pulled into his pocket a couple hundred um, selling like waist trainers, right? But like, it got scary to him. And he sold that business and walked away because he felt that the tides are changing. And I know, I know the guys who run Empire Flippers. They they are, they sell. They're a website broker. They sell um, like million dollar websites to people as assets. And they're really, really fired up on how many people are trying to sell their FBA businesses right now. Cause all these people who have built them up, they're all scared. Cause if you lose that buy button spot, your business disappears. It's a lot of eggs in one basket. Um, I think it's better to build a list and build, a um, uh, build a list and build an audience. Um, one down vote. Yes, I got my down vote for the day. It must've been Chase. I wonder if that's the person who was spamming. So, hey, Miles, good to see you. Gustavo, good to see you, Gustavo. Um, could I please talk a little bit more about the one example of an email sequence that can be sent to the lead until making an offer? Yeah, like storytelling is so powerful, Gustavo, right? Like, how did we get to where we're at? How do you, like, what is that story, that zero to hero, that character arc? It's really powerful. If you go search my channel for email marketing, there's a video my wife and I did together You'll see the the cover image on that video is my beautiful wife and my goofy self with my hat just sitting there on a couch. Um, she covers in depth the five sequence. It's a sequence of five emails that we put out. Um, 
really it's just you got to build a relationship and how do you build a relationship some with someone well we give of value to them right we try to give of them monitor your open rates monitor your click through rates try to get them to click and go read a blog post on your blog that gives more information because what that click does is it allows you to track through your autoresponder how many people open you want to see 30 to 50 percent open rates how many people click you want to see three to ten percent click through rates and it just gives you a little idea of is this email hitting or missing with the people and it's a, it's a process it's not an event it's not like you create your auto responder once and it's done and just kind of like think of the gary vaynerchuk jab 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 right hook get them in deliver the free thing help them understand how to integrate the free thing the goal really is like beyond storytelling and helping them understand helping them have an aha moment through your story of an aha moment, that's really powerful, but then helping them take action and get results. Because if they take action on what you're saying and they get results and they see results, then when you recommend a product, they've already taken action on something you've said, they got positive results, therefore the likelihood of them taking action, which is buying the affiliate thing you recommend, goes way, way, way up. And, and that's you have to get them to that point first, right? And sometimes it's helping them believe that they can, sometimes it's customer testimonials, it really depends on the niche and what you're doing. Um, test lots of things. And then I guess the other thing is send lots of emails after your bro after your follow-up sequence, send broadcast emails and every month go back through your broadcast emails and look at which broadcast email subject lines got the highest click through rate. Go look, do an audit of your own email essentially. Then go look at which of your broadcast emails got the highest click through rate. Take that data, pull out the ones that kicked ass and go add them to your follow-up. And you got to tweak things, right? You can't just go shove the, the square peg in the round hole, but it's it's a way for you to take all those broadcast emails that you should be sending to people when they finish the follow-up sequence and you're able to look, okay, cool. This, this video, this email crushed it, right? Like, let me take that out and go pop that in over there. And it's, it's an evolution. So, um, and I guess the one other tip is use the word you more than the word I. It's we all. It's so easy for us to talk about ourselves, but every reader is in their head thinking, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? So the more you could say, hey, this is for you. Have you done this? If you do this, you'll get this. Like really keep it focused on them. Like imagine it this way. If you meet somebody new at a coffee shop and that person talks about themselves all the time, I did this and I did that and I did this and this is my results pretty quick and be like, dude, this coffee, uh, yeah, it's time for me to leave this coffee show. This place sucks. But if that person's asking you questions about your story and at helping you, you know, and like there is the storytelling part from our end, but we want that to be of value to them. And so you got to use the word you a lot more. You and because are two of the, the most powerful words in that area. Cool. So moving along, we are getting close. I don't know exactly when the uh, end is here. By content, you mean articles about my products? All right, this is a great question. So Omar, I just joined the live video. By content, do you mean articles about my products? I'm bad at copywriting. I don't mean sales copy. Like when we create videos, like look at my videos. Like I don't put out commercials, right? A lot of people think video marketing is, I'm gonna make a video about this bottle of water I have to sell. I'm gonna make a video about this thing I have to sell. And that's the wrong way to go about it. Cause people are like, Dude, I am not watching YouTube or I'm not reading a blog for a freaking pitch. No one likes to be pitched to. No one likes to be sold, but everyone likes to buy. The content should be stories, stories that help people have aha moments that lead them to the, have them have that moment of, oh, I need that because that will help me get the result I want, right? So for me, one of the things is, is the sales funnel, right? Even if you're doing a content marketing or Facebook, it doesn't matter. When I help people through explaining how my old businesses failed because I was direct linking people and I wasn't building a list, I help people have an aha moment that says, ooh, I have to build a list. Well, how do I do that? Then I help them have an aha moment that that's a sales funnel. Oh, I need the sales funnel thing. And then they find my piece of content that teaches them how to build a sales funnel, right? After they've had those aha moments, and then they see my product offerings, which is essentially affiliate links for hosting and whatnot. So that's kind of the process, but you really want to help. Like if you have a product that, that solves a problem, talk about the problem, talk about the other ways they can solve the problem. Like you need to find ways to give content to help users beyond buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Because buy my stuff is annoying. Here's a story that's going to paint a picture that's going to help you have an aha moment that's going to help you realize that this thing is the solution to your biggest problem. That works. Buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Keyword, keyword, keyword doesn't work. And it's it's kind of an art, but that's the, the process. Um, Emmanuel, cool. Let's do this. Um, started my videoempire.com. So 
is it myvideoempire.com? I'm going to give this, oh, there it is. Cool, you, you wrote right below. So we are going to go do another review. I don't know how long we have. I think I got about 20 minutes left. Um, so let's share the screen here. Jump over to Manuel Lewis, myvideoempire.com. Dude, profitable opportunity seeker likes my recovering opportunity seeker comment. I love it. Oh, profitable opportunities recovering. That's just, I love the irony there. I'm glad you enjoy that. Um, I don't remember who I picked that up from, to be honest, but it's so true. There's a mindset of jumping from one opportunity to another. That's just, it doesn't serve anyone at all. So loading my video empire, first impressions, a lot going on. And again, this isn't a landing page. Like, like I can't really help you redesign a home page. The goal is to help you find like what's one page that has the potential of generating leads. Like your opt-in page is usually what we want to look at, like what fluid frame did. But with this being said, um, there's a lot of lost space up here, right? So this giant white space, giant white space, giant white space, all of this needs to be kind of condensed down. Your logo being this giant circle is not helping you. If you made the logo kind of go left to right, where it was a play button, my video empire, you could tighten this whole area up. And I want this navigation, like literally I want it up here. Right, because what that's going to do is it's going to pull up all of this. Now you've got this thing rotating. You've got free stuff. I've got a bubble here. Like you're you're overwhelming me with options. There's there's, there's so much going on here, and you even got the words right here. First impressions matter. That's very very true. And your first impression is a little chaotic. I can't tell what that yellow is on that, but I'm gonna scroll down and kind of see what's going on here. How it works. Pick your animations. So I don't how what works right. So here what I can't actually read that. Want to add your own videos we'll do the whole edit. Okay, cool. So you offer an editing thing, right? So you need, there needs to be a headline in here. And this is why a homepage is very difficult because we shouldn't be driving traffic to a homepage. We need to be driving traffic to a page that gives someone an opportunity to take an action. So generally speaking, that's an opt-in page. And generally speaking, that opt-in page is going to say, it's going to have a headline and it's going to have an offer. And the headline should say something like, Tired of editing your own videos? Let our team, let us show you how to save four hours a day editing videos with this three-step process. Click to get the free three-step process. And then you show them your three-step process, which is this ridiculously big and huge and awesome process. And they watch it and they're like, dude, I want that, but I don't have time for that. And then you offer it to do that for them. And that's how you sell a service. So really that's, that's my challenge here is that it's just, this isn't actually a, a homepage. We need, and it looks like you're selling um, kind of like pre-made video stuff. I think the goal, if you want to drive traffic, this would be this would not be a place to drive traffic. You need to come up with a way to drive traffic to a um, some sort of a page that gives them the opportunity to say yes or no to your free offer. And then ultimately, let's see what these look like on a sales page. Then the next one you're going to talk to is it just add it to cart? No. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so there's there's just not that much. Okay, so here's the video. There's not that much content on how this works. So you're selling these kind of... Um, gotcha, perfect. So help me, you know, like, I guess, think about where I'm at, right? If I'm looking to buy one of these things, what am I? Am I a YouTuber? Am I trying to come up with like this, these, um, what is this, uh, AI? Some sort of uh, Adobe Flash type thing. So like, help me choose. There's not really enough information here for me, but ultimately I think the goal should be, you need to have a page that offers the user the ability to become a lead. You need to give them something in exchange. And that page should have none of this, none of this, no giant logo. It should be a big headline up top, an offer and a button from there. And that's really the trick to the game because then you're getting them to the point that they are taking a step in your direction. You don't want to make the sale right away. You want to kind of and get them to take a step. Um, Dion Walker, absolutely. I'm using Thrive Themes on all my websites and I totally love them. Uh, I think it is the best solution I've found in a very long time. Um, so yeah, so it does look, I think this is really good feedback here, Emmanuel, like take it out. Um, so they're a motion designer. It's like there, there's a high ticket product and then there's kind of an interesting level of, uh, offering a little too much. So create your email list. AMZ owns the customers. This is, yeah, I, I think that's uh, back to the best bongs. Like Amazon owns that customer and ultimately you want to build the relationship and own that relationship. Um, I have three websites, one in transfer WordPress. 
So you could buy what's called a, a reseller account, Nancy. Um, if you have three websites you want to bring over, you could buy a reseller account and you could break off your separate um, kind of like hosting. That's an advanced method, but then you can also get a hosting package at uh, A2 that allows you to host several websites. Um, it's it's pretty easy. You don't need necessarily a separate hosting account for each one. You look at reseller if you're interested in learning how to use the web hosting manager, which is WHM, or I think it's um I think you know maybe getting one of their packages that can handle five different uh videos. Oh, we got competition for number one fan. I like it. I appreciate that, you guys. Um, I don't know how to, I don't remember how to do a dollar try on click funnels using custom code. I, I deleted that code when I deleted my click funnels. It didn't really work. They just dropped all those stuff anyways. Um, in my opinion, what's a good open rate? I would say 30 to 50% is a good open rate, but it could be as low as 10. It really depends on which one is going on. Uh, depends on what you're doing and who you're talking to. So good open rate, I'd say, you know, 10 to 30%, uh, 30 to 50%. I get some that are like 70% open rates, but we really have targeted that over time. What are the best high ticket industries to go into? I specialize in a lower end product and want to scale it up to a new high end industry. Well, like what fits in with what you're already doing, right? Like, are you really trying to go jump and be an opportunity seeker into a new, totally a new area? I don't know if that's a, a really good idea. I would look at what is the next most important item that they're going to buy after they purchase your lower end product, right? Like ascend that customer to higher levels. Like off, you can offer them coaching. You could offer a live event. You could offer a, uh, one-on-one -on -one sessions, right? Like the one-on-one -on -one coaching, you do group coaching. There's, I think the best high ticket industry to go into is the one that that's captured your heart and your soul. And really like it's, it's what you want to do. And it's what you want to share with the world. It's, I just, I don't, I don't base the, the ideas on, um, I just don't base my ideas on like what high ticket industries are going to work best. Right. If you want, you can look, there's like, um, like what's the name of that website? It's, um, like high ticket affiliate programs or high dollar affiliate programs. You look at what, what sells high, but I mean, I don't know, like yacht chartering probably has a pretty good cost for sale. You could sell Cessna airplanes. Like that would probably have a pretty good commission. But if you don't like yachts or Cessnas and you don't live a lifestyle that's around those things, it would make absolutely no sense. So I think you're looking outside of yourself and you're trying to get me to give you an idea that's outside, but I'm trying to help you understand that the answer to that question is ultimately inside and you got to find out what's inside of you and then who is the audience you're going to help and how can you ascend and help them do more and more and get more results? And essentially, how do you just ascend that customer further and further? Really honor the fact that you get to help people, right? Like take that seriously. Um, cool. So Commander Shepard, um, thanks for the respect, man. I'm, I'm happy to do this. Uh, Manuel, glad you liked it. So cool. Yeah. Oh, all right. So you've read Pressfields Do the Work. I, I think it's very similar and the War of Art is very similar on that. Um, so go to, we have applied over the last month, a lot of your tips from your videos. Thank you. We'll be linking to a lot of videos from your website. Awesome. Glad you're here. You're taking action. What's the best way to sell products, product services in other languages, content, like you just have content created in other languages and, and do content marketing in other languages. Generally, you're going to see a lot less competition when you get out of English. Um, and that's really powerful, but, um, like, it's just, it's all about content, right? Like that's, that's how you do it. You can do your content could be ads in a landing page, but your content could be videos and your content also could be, um, written blog posts. So I think it's just important to remember that, that the whole internet works on content. That's, that's all that, there ever is actually. Um, Linda, I'm happy to share. Um, I put in focus time, good things will happen. Absolutely. Have I ever heard of somebody getting a well-paid job look, from learning the core skills of WordPress content marketing, et cetera? So, you know, no, I haven't, but I have followed a process of getting a good paid job of something that was relatively easy to me. Then I started helping them with their WordPress website. I consciously was like, do you guys have a WordPress site? No, I'm engaged in building a side project here. I'd love to help you grow your content marketing. And I, so I entered in customer support because I have a customer support background. This was the last job I had when, when my life, my business crashed, my life crashed. I had to move back in with my parents at the age of 30 with my wife and, and literally had to borrow money to, to buy a car, like a thousand dollar POS Jeep. Um, so I hit like rock bottom and I went and got a job. I got a customer support job. It was easy for me to do. It was like 25 bucks an hour, but it was in the Bay area. So scale, like it was an expensive area to be in. And they 
knew I had a WordPress based project that I was still working on. And I asked them if they did WordPress and they were cool with it. And I did help them with some of the WordPress stuff. But ultimately, I got out of that job in six months and I started doing WordPress kind of marketing and kind of SEO, local business SEO and WordPress marketing for local businesses. And that was kind of a massive amount of experience. It wasn't a job, right? I didn't go hit the feeder bar and get a paycheck. I had to learn the process of pitching services and educating customer or educating potential clients on what the value is in content marketing and having a WordPress site. But it's not difficult to help business owners realize that if they're not showing up on the first page of Google, their, their business is dying, like literally dying. And a WordPress site with content optimized correctly is the path to showing up on the first page of Google. And I helped a bunch of small businesses in a small community I was in outrank some of their major competitors, um, changed their businesses. I got a ton of experience. They were happy to pay me. Did that for a few years until the, the info product stuff worked. So it's almost kind of like, you know, you can almost create a better job for yourself doing that for people than you can getting a real job. But with that said, I still went and got a real job for six months and I was gonna work it as long as it had to work. It just happened to be, I was far enough along with my side gig that at six months, my wife and I, we were comfortable enough to, that we were ready to kind of take the leap of faith. Um, so it, those numbers aren't, don't don't stick with those numbers, right? Like what I'm trying to say is, is follow the, the, the idea of just get a job that's really like, get a good job for sure, a job that's gonna pay you as good as you can and then really push on it with um, find, friends, find family members, right? Make a blog about the best bongs, start reviewing bongs. If you love bongs, right? Do what you have to do, get the experience, even if it's just a test site or it's something that you probably won't ever monetize, but you might, you never really know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's, there's a big possibility for it. Um, Jocelyn, glad to see you here. Um, Parker Gibbons, I'm looking to expand sales in new countries that aren't primarily English speaking. What company can help you implement all new languages? So I've translated a bunch of my books into Spanish and we have four or five of our books available on Kindle in en Espanol. Um, I went to Upwork and I literally hired someone on Upwork for that. What I would recommend is hire someone on Upwork, get a test job done from them in translating something, something medium size, small to medium size, five page document, uh, three pages on your website, then hire a professional editor and copywriter in that language to double check what that individual did because since this is not a language that you obviously are fluent in or else you'd be considering doing this yourself, you don't actually know how good that translation is. And one more caveat, if you're going into the Spanish market, Ooh, Spanish has so many dialects, right? It's so like, if you look at like English, there's like US English, there's UK English, there's uh, Australian English and it, it varies. But I think Spanish is even more different like vosotros in some and then you don't have vosotros in others and some of the words and the phrase, like it, it's actually crazy. So know that if you hire a, uh, a writer or translator in Mexico, and then you get someone from like España, from Spain to, to quality assure that, they're gonna be like, oh man, this is all wrong. And that's just because uh, Espanol in Spain is very different than, than in Mexico. So like, like papas, patatas, right? Like they just call potatoes a totally different word. Um, really fun to, to travel and experience it. Not very fun if you're trying to really communicate effectively. So just make sure you're really focused on what languages you're going into, get a translation done, and then have a quality assurance check done and make sure they both get the same dialect and make sure those dialects are focused on where you're going next. Uh, Spanish might be the extreme example, but that's the only one I have a reference point for. Um, how did I get people? How do you get people to your webinar traffic method? You could pay. Uh, you could send emails to your email list. You can get them from Facebook pay per click. Uh, you can do content marketing. You can get them from Google traffic. On they can find your organic traffic and then they can subscribe. It seems like a webinar can be very effective to making you a lot of money in the end if done right. Yeah, that that's totally true. Um, so one question is, is a webinar a great way for you to help lots and lots of people do lots and lots of cool things and help lots of people get positive results? Because it sounds like you're focused on you making money and that will get you so far. But when you focus on helping people get results, when you focus on helping people change their lives for the better, you'll get even better results. So I would honestly be very honest with yourself in that situation. Um, but like Facebook pay-per-click traffic is probably the fastest, quickest, easiest for most niches. I think, yeah, email your list. You want to build your email list, which is what would happen when they, when they register for your webinar, they would get on your email list and then you 
nurture the relationship with them and learn how to do webinars. But honestly, I think, I think be sure you're focused on being of service to an audience and not focused on get money because get money is, man, if you just focus on yourself, you're going to be left empty handed at some point. Might work for a couple of years, but just at some point. What's the difference between content marketing and affiliate marketing? Okay, so content marketing is the process of creating content that will attract traffic through the search engine. So I create YouTube videos, people searching for topics in YouTube, find my videos. That's content marketing. I create long blog posts, people who find my content in Google, people search Google for like ClickFunnels alternative, they find my blog post, they read it, boom. That traffic I generated through content is content marketing. Affiliate marketing is the process of me recommending products and services and I receive a commission when someone clicks through my unique link and purchases that item. Does that make sense? So the, they're totally different. The one is traffic strategy, which is content marketing. The other one is monetization strategy, which is I help other people sell their products and I earn a commission for every sale that I generate. So they work together to create a business. Cool. So, um, Awesome. Four weeks ago, subscribe today. Profitable opportunities. I got the I got the subscribe. Yeah, this will be recorded. It should go automatically live. It has to process, which takes a few hours. I don't even know. This is a long video at this point. Um, how long have we been going? Who knows? Miles, want to use Active Campaign, but Member Mouse doesn't natively integrate with it. Interesting. So I would recommend that you look at if you're going Active Campaign, I would look at Thrivecart in conjunction with Active Member 360. Um, so Active Campaign, you, you got AC360, you're kind of mixing the two together. So Active Campaign is the email system that you can set up the drip or the automations and the tags. Active Member 360 is the plugin that goes on your website. And at that point, you're able to um, kind of like get those two things to talk to each other. And then Thrivecart is the shopping system. Uh, if you're interested in getting help tying that together, I'm going to give you a link to the guy who set it all up for me. Um, he will do a free 30 minute, 20 minute call on Skype. If you want to talk to somebody who can help um, Dave at integratepro.com. So he physically set up, Oh, I see some Jeep headlights and a grill coming up. I like that. Um, so he set up that stack that marketing stack for me and it works really well i had to, to tweak my brain a little bit to get that to work but that's it um so yeah shopping cart i, I think thrive cart is great um it's not open to the public but i've got a link on my site if you go i've got a, a, a page on my site that's like my three marketing ex stacks explained so if you go to google and you search milesbeckler.com comma three marketing stacks you should find my my post that talks about the three marketing stacks and you'll see the one that has thrive active campaign active uh, member um Cool. Glad you like the the mastermind. I'm happy to help. Um, man, best bong. Like, yeah, create content in your space, man. Your space is exploding right now. The marijuana space. I got friends who they've grown for years and years, and they're they're getting these huge jobs growing for these mega corporations. They're getting to do these giant grow projects. I know people who do apparel, lifestyle businesses. I know a guy who invented like a a buckle grinder, uh, Delta Nine clothing. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. Like, like, there's there's a lot to do on the space. So run for it. Um, love the Jeep headlights. Uh, embarking, man, the Jeep is just coming along. I'll have to do a video on the Jeep. Is WordPress site better than having a programmer developer develop a custom site? Absolutely, 100%, without a doubt, yes, Wendy. And here is why. Because WordPress is actually developed by thousands of the smartest people in the world for free. It's called open source. It's an open source platform, which means you can go install it and create a website on it without ever having to ask anybody's permission. You don't have to pay anything. They run all of the security updates. They make it function. They make it better. And then the cool part is you can go add on widgets or plugins that help it do other things. So if you wanted to start an e-commerce store, you could add on WooCommerce. If you want to optimize it for SEO, you can add on the Yoast SEO plugin. If you want to sell a membership program, you can add on Member Mouse. If you want to add a forum, you could add on BuddyPress. And it's literally infinitely customizable. The other thing that it does is it automatically updates. So you don't have to keep paying said developer to go in and create, create, create updates, patch for security. And honestly, 
There's no developer in the world, hand coder, that's going to hand code you a site that is going to A, work as efficiently as the code on WordPress works, and B, work as good with the search engines that the code on WordPress works. It is flat out easy and powerful. I drive over a million visits a month on a good month through my WordPress websites, and it has been the core and backbone of my business. There's a reason why 30% of websites online all run WordPress. You do need to get comfortable with the security. I recommend the WordFed plug-in security, but go check out my DIY sales funnel video series. I've got a playlist here on YouTube, or I have the ClickFunnels alternative video uh, post, not video, post on milesbeckler.com, and that's where you can go get that content. Um, and really, yeah, just, just go to WordPress. You gotta learn how to do two or three things, and then once you learn those two or three things, how to create a new page, how to create a new post, that's it you know, how to reply to a comment, like that's it. All you do is you create content, create content, create content, and it gets really, really powerful. Um, cool, so I think about five minutes or so, and Nancy, what do I think of ConvertKit? Funny story, uh, I actually know Nathan, oh goodness, I don't wanna do that, sorry. I actually know, uh, I think it's Nathan Barry is his name, who started ConvertKit. I met him at a conference in Bangkok, I didn't know who it was. I'm hanging out with a guy, drinking wine at a, at a social mixer at a conference, and I'm kinda like messing with him a little bit, kinda talking smack, just joking around like I would a buddy. Um, it was a really good group of people. Turns out he's our keynote speaker with how well he's done with ConvertKit. Um, just a fun side story. Anyways, I, I tried to get him to drink too much wine so he would have a hangover when he was on stage, but he was smart enough to not and um, really, really good guy. So the first thing I can say about ConvertKit is it's run by a very smart and very talented individual who has his heart in the right location. If I was not using Active Campaign in order to manage my membership access, because Active Campaign plugs into Active Member, um, if that wasn't what I was using, I probably would be testing out ConvertKit on my own. Um, they have some cool tools. With that said, it's still young. It's still very young, so it can actually potentially be maybe a little buggy, but with that said, that's normal. Like that's, that's where things are, and he has a great team of people. He's fired up on it, and he's building and growing and adding on functionality left and right. Um, um, I would potentially trust them to run a business on. Um, I don't I don't recommend them through my site because I've never used them and it's difficult. I don't like, you know, that integrity thing, right? I don't want to ever get to the point where I'm recommending things I'm not actually using. So that's why he doesn't get like a hard recommendation, but I would absolutely test his services if it didn't die, dial in for me. Anthony, I'm happy to, to share. How do people get paid from content marketing? So through content marketing, you build your list and then you offer affiliate products. That's how you make commissions. You can offer them products to buy on Amazon, physical products. You can go create your own products and sell your own digital products. You can sell coaching. You can sell consulting. You can sell a membership program. You can sell advertising. You can sell, I mean, it's, it's infinite, right? Like when you have an audience of people who know, like, and trust you, you're able to offer them things that solve their problems. And anytime you offer them something that solves their problem, there's an opportunity to earn income. If that's an affiliate link and an affiliate program that can generate the income, or if it's just a blog post that shares good information and it has advertisements on it, you can make money from the ad revenue there. Um, it's all about building that audience and building the trust. And obviously once you get an audience, you can't just like offer, 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 offer. You need to give a lot of value. You gotta mix in that value. Jab, 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 right hook, right? Give, 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 give them the opportunity to purchase. Um, so that's it. My thoughts on MCA. Don't even know what MCA is. Um, wait, BC boy? Ad rock MCA. Yeah, I like the BC boys. Oh, that's all I got, Joe. Don't know what MCA is. What software do I suggest for creating funnels, building email lists, autoresponder, et cetera? So let me actually, I'm gonna go pull up a link real quick. And I'm gonna send you a link to a piece of content that has the entire process laid out for you with all of the different bits and pieces. It's a little too much for me to put in here. Um, so at beast mode, one quick second. So that post has everything on it, beast mode. Um, so go check that out. Um, what software, thanks a bunch. Cool, flashback, marketing your car. Um, awesome sauce. Do I think the peak time for affiliate marketing is over? Absolutely not. Do I think, do I think companies should still offer affiliate programs? I, yeah, I mean, so here's like, do I think a company should offer an affiliate program? I, another way of saying that is, do you want a team of 
commission only salespeople promoting your products? To me, that's a yes. I would not throw my affiliate program out to the world. I would be very selective on who I allow be an affiliate because they potentially can, you know, do things like they, they write reviews about you and you don't, you want to kind of manage the process of how they go about um, marketing your stuff. But like ultimately, yeah, like my wife and I do a lot of affiliate marketing still to this day, five figure monthly income on affiliate marketing only. And we have several other means of generating income. So it's a very viable business model in this day and age. Uh, really, I think that the thing about affiliate marketing, if you're going to run one, you just need to really take the time because it's not something you set up and you walk away from. You need to have someone who is going to go recruit affiliates, who's going to create the kind of content that affiliates need. You, it, it takes a lot more work than most people know. I built an affiliate company or an affiliate program for a greeting card company um, in 2013. And we grew it in about a year up to a quarter million dollars in additional revenue. Uh, this company was making $1.5 million a year. I literally added on $250,000 in additional revenue through this affiliate program. Um, but then when I ended up leaving and working for myself, they never brought somebody in to run it. And it's since very kind of, it's um, atrophied significantly. So um, yeah. Best social media to promote on. Last question based on my results is the social media that has your audience already covered this earlier. Um, if your people are on Pinterest, get your stuff on Pinterest. If your people are on Facebook, get your stuff on pay Facebook. Snapchat, Instagram, same thing. If you don't know who's on there, go do some Googling and find out what the demographics are of every single one of those social networks. All in all, I think you really need to just do all of them and they all need to be done right. Uh, cool. So one more. All right. <laughs> no solo ads. Solo ads are rubbish. Um, Opinion on keywords that have been 500 to 1,000 searches a month, no real content marketing competition, but not sure of the keywords. Yeah, I, I go after everything. I do 500 searches a month keywords, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. I go after everything. For me, it's more about relevance in keywords. If it's a highly relevant phrase to my niche, to what I'm doing, and I mean, all, all you're saying in some senses is like, there's a thousand people searching for this thing every single month and there's no competition, which means no one's being of service to those thousand people. Why not go be of service to them? Give them the content they're looking for. Help those thousand people. If you do that over and over, let's say you do a 90 day challenge and every single one has a thousand searches per month. At the end of 90 days, you will have content on low competition phrases that equate somewhere around 90,000 potential searches a month. If you hit the number one spot for all of those, you literally could create 40,000 plus visits to your site per month, niche specific. That's the power of it. Like go do what no one else is willing to do, right? Like if I have to scrub the floors to prove myself in a business, I'm gonna scrub the floors to prove myself in a business. If I need to go after the 200 to 500 to 700 monthly search phrases to prove myself in a niche, I'm gonna go do all of the work to prove myself in a niche because your efforts compound. And once you have 100 posts, once you have 200 posts, once you have 1,000 posts, the amount of traffic trickling in from all those different posts adds up to a really, really, really big number. Cool. All right. Paid soul ads. No ad swaps. I don't do those either. Uh, free. I don't think there's free, like free way to build lists, go create content, go run ads, offer people who are interested in what you have things, anything that is churning out emails in mass. And that's their business model is more emails and buy my emails, send swap, blah, blah, emails. All you're reaching are people who have inboxes that are absolutely crowded and the noise in their inbox is going to be way too much. And you're never going to break through that noise. When you get people searching you out on Google, finding your content, reading your content, having a positive experience with your content, they'll join your list. They'll buy your products because they'll like you and they'll trust you. Go be of service. And I think that's the biggest uh, thing we're going to end on here is go be of service of everything we've talked about how to do it, the nuts and the bolts, whether it, it, you know, the vulnerability and push through, if you focus all of your energy on being of service to an audience and you go give of yourself and you share your talents with the world, you develop your talents more, you continue to research to be an authority in your field and you give, 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 everything will take care of itself over time. That I promise, focus on building an audience, focus on building your list with a clean opt-in page and you will be amazed at the results you get. I thank you very much for your time today. I really do appreciate appreciate your time. We went long. If you saw the first live stream that just flopped and uh, sorry about that, but this is the process. This is how it works. Even I still encounter these kinds of challenges when I run these. I hope the second live stream was even better and I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. Thanks again. Be well.